Good morning, everyone. And as my slideshow is coming up, welcome to today's Affinity Call, um, a part two to December's call, actually, where we will be discussing more successful student and parent virtual engagement during COVID-19. FCAM would like to thank Cornerstone funder Helios Education Foundation and supporters Wells Fargo and the National College Attainment Network for their generous support of the College Ready Florida initiatives and today's affinity call. I am your host, as always, for these affinity calls, Laverne Hanfield, Programs Coordinator with the Florida College Access Network. We have a great discussion for you all today. I am thrilled to have Jamise Carroll, Member Services Associate for the National College Attainment Network, also known as NCAN, join us for today's call. As the Member Services Associate, Ms. Carroll provides NCAN members with support through use of and sharing best practices, webinars, conferences, and online resources with the goal of increasing members' ability to increase the number of underrepresented students entering and completing a higher education. Um, Ms. Carroll also contributes to maintaining and expanding NCAN's membership base, along with recognizing the work and achievements of members. And I am delighted to welcome back today as part of our Q&A discussion, um, Carol Lopez, who is currently the supervisor of College and Career Readiness and supports school counselors and brace advisors for Broward County Public Schools. She has served in the educational profession as a teacher and school counselor and various other roles for 20 years. Carol advocates for students post-secondary attainment through community outreach in Broward County. Among her accolades, Carol has been honored as one of the 100 Outstanding Women of Broward County in 2018 and was also named as one of FCAN's unsung heroes for her recovery work during the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School tragedy. Carol is passionate about education and the future of today's youth. And again, I am delighted to welcome back Sharon Krantz, Executive Director of the Division of Student Services for Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Ms. Krantz has worked as a school counselor and student services department chair for both middle and senior high schools for over 25 years prior to becoming a district administrator. In her role as Executive Director, she directly oversees the College Access Program, Miami-Dade County Public Schools post-secondary planning I'm so sorry, College Assistance Program, um, Miami-Dade County Public Schools Post-Secondary Planning and College Access Program in all of the district's high, school, high schools. Um, Jamise, Carol, and Sharon, I thank you all for joining us today. So before we dive in to today's presentation, a few housekeeping items. If you are familiar with FCAN's webinars, usually all participants are muted but we have changed the conduct for the counter affinity calls because we would like you all to share your successful strategies on how you're engaging with students and families virtually and resources you're using to host your events. I'll be going over those additional ways to participate later in the webinar, and we will allot time at the end for any questions, but you can submit them at any time, and I encourage you to do so. You can use the questions box in the control panel, which you should see um, to the right of your screen if you're viewing from a desktop computer. And finally, this call is being recorded. All materials from today's call will be available within a week, um, including the recording and the slides. And if you were unable to join us for the December call, which was part one, um, you can actually now in the handout section find the slides for, those, for that call. Um, as we discussed today with Carol and Sharon, um, their implementation strategies and best practices, you can follow along using that handout as to what they discussed in the last call. So very briefly, if you're new or if you're not, um, I'd like to go over what the affinity calls are. Um, this is a time specifically for counselors or any college access professionals to come together to share with each other. Florida is a fairly large state. So aside from all the conferences that only happen once a year and this past year they've been virtual, um, you may only get to see or hear um, what other schools are doing through newsletters, email blasts, and social media. So hearing someone else talk about their program could spark an idea in you to add a new feature to your existing program, implement something completely new, or discover a new resource. The intention of these calls is threefold. 
Um, the first is to create a space for you to share your best practices for programs around FCAN's College Ready Florida initiatives in conjunction with the email blast that I send out. Um, second is to highlight the great work you're doing in preparing students for an education beyond high school. And lastly, to provide resources from local and state, and today, as we have, national partners. We hope to have some school counselors or mentors or college access professionals like yourselves as featured presenters on future calls, as well as um, local college access networks on how they can provide support for you if one is in your region or your county. If there are topics that you'd like FCAN to highlight in future affinity calls, please make sure to fill out the post webinar survey and let us know. So we're gonna get right into today's presentation and discussion. These are questions that for the past year and especially on the last um, counselor affinity call, many, many attendees have posed to our speakers how you're gonna how to actually do FAFSA completion nights virtually, what are some best practices, what resources are available, how do you successfully connect and engage with the students and parents. These are all the questions that you have that you have posed um, to our speakers and also to FCAN so we can provide you with the resources and the best practices that you're asking for. So of all of the questions that we've gotten, we've boiled them down to two main things that you wanna know. The first, what is available? What is available to help you implement your virtual FAFSA completion events um, and what actually works in engaging with students and parents and conducting these um, virtual FAFSA completion events. So we first have Jamise Carroll from the National College Payment Network who will discuss some um, resources that are available to you from NCAN and then we'll actually dive into a discussion with Carol and Sharon, um, following up with them on what they've seen that's actually worked and what is, what's available and that they have used in implementing their work. So, Jamise, we'll head on to you. Thank you, LaVarne, and thanks for having me. Um, it's always nice to get together with folks um, that just do great work, uh, and I'm happy to talk more about NCAN. So, as LaVarne stated, my name is Jamise Carroll, I am the Member Services Associate at NCAN, and believe it or not, NCAN is a mighty team of about 14 employees. So some folks are generally surprised by that, but I don't uh, work alone, um, and I'm happy to talk more about uh, NCAN's work. So for those who may not be as familiar with NCAN, NCAN is a Washington, D.C.-based nonprofit, and we're a membership organization that currently um, has about 500 member organizations. Uh, just this past year, NCAN actually celebrated its 21st year, 25th year anniversary. Our members come to us from a multitude of industries and backgrounds, so there's a mix of community-based organizations, K-12 districts and schools, colleges and universities, gear up and trio programs, state agencies, and more. Um, our members are simply united by their commitment to closing uh, post-secondary uh, equity gaps uh, on the basis of race, socioeconomic status, ethnicity, and first generation status. Um, as I kind of spoke to, but um, more than half of our uh, members do represent the community-based uh, community-based organizations and work in tandem with their communities and school districts to provide much needed support uh, for uh, students, particularly from those that are underrepresented from low-income backgrounds, first-gen, and students of color. So if you are not an NCAN member and NCAN, uh, if you're interested in learning more about the benefits and resources that can be offered, feel free to check out our website at www, ugh, I'm messing this all up. Go to www.incan.org uh, and click on our uh, member, fit, member benefits <laughs> uh, tab. You can also learn more about what INCAN does, um, our mission and vision I have here on this page for you, um, but wanted to share a little bit more about how we actually do this work and what our focus area is. 
So the first is building the capacity of our members by provi providing professional development and opportunities on a range of topics, anything from uh, what we're talking about here today in this conversation. So FAFSA, virtual FAFSA, FAFSA completion, college and career readiness through various channels. So we try to do our due diligence and best job of getting out resources in multiple methods, whether that's webinars, blogs, uh, so on and so forth. We also advocate for policy solutions to help remove the barriers to college attainment uh, and work closely with policymakers uh, and government ag agencies such as federal student aid to simplify the FAFSA, which uh, we made, that stride has been made and there's some success there. And then last but not least, we finally support um, systems change, systems change work uh, in K through 12 by partnering with school districts uh, and national associations to elevate best practices. So um, what you all want to hear most about, um, I'm going to go over a few of our public facing resources. So these are easily accessible. Uh, you can just go to our website, www.ncan.org. Um, there's no uh, loopholes to get through. Uh, all of this information is available to you. Um, so you can see here, this is a screenshot of our website, and we have just a tab dedicated uh, of resources to FAFSA completion. And as you can see, uh, we have a multitude of resources. So why invest? Uh, in increasing FAFSA completion, FAFSA completion tools. I'll talk a little bit about our FAFSA tracker, our new and exciting resource, which is our FAFSA resource library, uh, and some of the other resources that you see in the drop down. So um, I'll also highlight our FAFSA Bright Spot blog series where we elevated members' work uh, and their strategies. Just another great resource for you all. And then I'll talk a little bit about federal uh, resources. So first up, here's the FAFSA resource library. We know that the FAFSA is the gateway to post-secondary enrollment and completion. Uh, but we also know, right, that this past year um, has posed quite a bit of challenges. Um, for practitioners who do this work day to day in helping students uh, get this work done. Uh, we created this resource uh, to help uh, practitioners, uh, stakeholders weed through the tremendous amount of information about what works to, com what works to increase FAFSA completion. We've identified key resources for the major areas all communities should address when creating and or strengthening a FAFSA completion initiative. So most importantly, um, or what may be more timely to you, so there's a couple sections uh, that we have in this resource, but I think what would be most timely um, for those on the call is the section on guiding through the FAFSA completion process, as well as what um, what comes after, after the form is completed. And we also have a section uh, that I believe you all will find extremely helpful on accessing and using student level uh, FAFSA completion data to target your FAFSA completion efforts efficiently. So those are two sections that I will call out um, just here for you, but no, um, those are the ones that I just feel are most relevant to you now in this moment. But once again, a free resource. And what's really, really nice, I know that time is not always on um, our side. And so we make a lot of our resources and documents just very friendly in terms of downloading, easy co copy and paste um, to kind of save you some time. So you don't have to like recreate the wheel. Um, it's more so just kind of like re repurposing existing content um, that we have. So next, the FAFSA tracker, um, which lives on our uh, Form Your Future website. Um, and this is just another great resource. I know that uh, the state of Florida 
has uh, a really robust tracker. Um, but if you're ever curious or you want to know um, national data on FAFSA completion, or you want to look at other schools in your area uh, to see kind of what's going on, um, this is a, a great place to start. Um, you can find completion rates, as I said, by state, district, or school. Um, this screenshot here, um, I pulled this last week, uh, and this has been updated. This FAFSA uh, information uh, data on the website has been updated, um, but we've been gaining background for about seven weeks. Uh, but at this time, we were roughly still down like 10.1% compared to last year. I've noted um, my colleague, Bill Devon, who is the Director of Data and, and Evaluation. Um, he manages uh, the FAFSA Tracker page, um, loves to talk about all things data related. So if you were more curious, if you poked around on the site, um, on this webpage and had questions, Bill is a great resource as he's always happy to run analysis um, uh, that you may not see. Um, on the tracker itself. So I kind of alluded to uh, our Bright Spots uh, blog series, and this series uh, highlights NCAN members who through quick and creative thinking were able to shift uh, and support students virtually with FAFSA completion in the early months of the pandemic. So uh, this is just another place. These are very quick reads. Um, just really great blast of information around what NCAN members were doing and how they, although I know uh, this word is supposed to be less than 20, uh, 2020, but pivoted, <laughs> um, you'll find that you'll get just some really great bullet points, great insights uh, to how our members uh, were, doing, were doing this work. Uh, you can simply, if you lose sight or you're like, what is Jamise talking about? How do I get to this blog series? I know that Laverne mentioned that uh, this affinity call uh, will be recorded, so you can always go back. And or we have a really uh, intuitive search feature, FAFSA Bright Spots, uh, if you just type that in and then it'll pull up a search uh, of resources for you. So you're probably wondering, just outside of there being this great uh, FAFSA Bright Spots blog series, what are the components um, to delivering successful virtual services? And so I took my time to kind of think about what were some of those themes, uh, whether that's in the work of our members, uh, through conversation, so on and so forth. And so I'm sure that you'll hear from Sharon and, and Carol more in depth, uh, as I believe some of these components have for sure played out in a lot of their their day to day work uh, as it relates to uh, virtual FAFSA completion. So the first that I will say is technology. So having technology that supports the audience that you wish to attract and allows for individualized assistance is critical in reaching students where they where they are. So. You will hear a multitude of platforms being utilized, whether that's like Zoom or Teams or Google Hangout. Uh, and in thinking about that, uh, some of those platforms, right, making sure that your family, the students and the families that you serve know those platforms are secure so, and safe. So make sure that you develop some sort of messaging around uh, ensuring that they know that their information is safe. Uh, being on a virtual platform, staffing, having the appropriate number of staff to support a FAFSA event, and thinking through some of the roles that may not be uh, FAFSA expertise related. So meaning someone who can like troubleshoot technology issues, kind of be in the green room, right, to do some of that behind the scenes work, man monitor a chat, Q&A, um, and even just greet folks. Uh, to your virtual event. Communications, think about how students uh, and families will know 
uh, that you're even offering these services, right? Are you texting? Are you sending out automated voicemails? Uh, I've heard a few of our members are going old school and mailing postcards. Um, how are you utilizing social media? Those are just some things to talk about or to think about. Timeliness. Are our services meeting students and parents where they're at? Um, what is their work schedule like? What is their school schedule like? Um, which could vary, right? Uh, could our students' parents be at work? And how might that impact being able uh, to help students get their FAFSAs completed? Last but not least, the most successful organizations uh, we know really have a welcome trial and error. Uh, meaning that they're the ones who I see um, and that we see kind of find their juice and their energy because they try things. Uh, and although that sounds, I know that probably sounds like quite exhausting, um, but I think there's opportunity to know that there's things out there that you don't have to like recreate the wheel. It's more so just going back, going back to repurposing content to really shape how it works for your your uh, student and family population. Uh, so once you figure out what works, you won't need to necessarily write, go back to the, the drawing board. Um, knowing what engages your students, um, right, is gonna vary, vary across. Uh, and so you really have to kind of like tap into that, try some things, see how that works, and then, right, utilize the resources around you. Think through one or two things that need to be pivoted, uh, right, that this may not work. So try to identify what those things may be. Um, you have access to students and communications that you may or may not have tapped into. So um, you'll see in some of our member stories, there's ways that they have even just utilize uh, peers to help kind of elevate and talk about the importance of completing your FAFSA and um, right to create some level of like relatability, but also to like demystify um, the process of completing a FAFSA. So hopefully I shared some tidbits, insightful information for you all. Um, I appreciate you for listening in. Here's my contact information. Uh, if you aren't already, please feel free to follow us on social. Follow me on social. Um, we tend to like tweet out uh, and give great resources there. Um, hopefully I didn't talk too much, Laverne, uh, but that is all that I have. Thank you so much, Jamise. And I'd also like to point out to everyone um, to make sure that you are um, if you haven't already, register um, with the, uh, register to participate in the College Ready Florida initiatives and or, I should say and, not or, and um, make sure that you're subscribed to the FCAN mailing list because if you are a counselor, uh, college access mentor, college access professional in any way, you are also added to the College Ready Florida coordinator mailing list. And at the bottom, I wish I included a screenshot of it to add to the slides, but I, I didn't unfortunately. Um, at the bottom of the weekly e-blast, um, there's always a monthly priority list, which is actually taken directly from NCAN's K through 12, 15-month um, college and career access calendar. Ooh, it's a mouthful. Um, where I actually pull the resources that they've highlighted for that month around our different initiatives to so apply ourselves Florida in data collection and FAFSA completion. Many resources of those that are linked there are pulled from the NCAN FAFSA library, um, but they may not be topics that I'm linking to that are pertaining to what you need in that moment. So do make sure that you check out um, NCAN's FAFSA resource library as well. And in the past year, the FAFSA bright spots, there were some things from the different NCAN members that I have pulled um, from those different blog posts and highlighted them in the e-blast and sent out to you all as well. So again, make sure you check out NCAN's FAFSA resource library, follow that um, hashtag or search it on their website, FAFSA bright spots to learn what other states around the nation are doing and what has been successful to them, if you are interested. Thank you again, Jamise, for joining us today. So right now, we're gonna get into questions. We have 
so much time for all the questions. Um, take the questions from you right now if you're asking them in the questions box. Um, it is, again, to the right of your screen if you're viewing from a desktop computer. Um, and also, you submitted some through the registration as well. Um, and there were also some during December's call that we were not able to get to. So between registration and December's call, we compiled um, the questions and, and narrowed them down to the main topics. And we'll also take questions today from the from you all from the questions box. Again, if you're viewing from the a desktop computer to the right of your screen, you'll see the, the dashboard for today and you'll see the questions box and you can type in your questions to um, Cheryl or Carol. So. Cheryl, Sharon, Carol, I'm going to stop showing my screen so we can see you all's beautiful faces. <laughs> Welcome back to Counselor Affinity Call. Um, I kind of do a, a check-in with you all since Puxatani Phil did his uh, weather check earlier this week. I wanted to do a temperature check with you guys. Uh, to see, since we spoke in December about your events, um, how have they been going? Have you added anything new? Um, for those who were not able to join on the December call or didn't listen to the um, recording or the handouts, which are in the handout section at the moment, Broward County, they have their college and career uh, corner every Wednesday. Um, Miami-Dade County Schools, they had a college month in October. So following up from those events, what what have you guys have you guys been doing anything new or how have your current events been going? We'll ask Carol first. Hi. Um, so yes, we, we're still working on our college and career corners. Um, that is going very strong. Um, we get anywhere from 100 to 700 participants at any given uh, Wednesday night, and that happens every Wednesday unless we are on, on vacation or anything like that. Um, it's gotten so popular that people have been reaching out to us saying, how can we join this, uh, This, you know, how can we present in this college and career corner? Um, so uh, from last time in when we talked in December, we had hosted um, fast fall virtual nights that were very well attended and we took it a step further actually and we did um fast fall nights in spanish and creole um, so that was something new that we did um, we took the model that we used for our uh our previous ones and then uh went ahead and did it in spanish and creole which went really well um and now we are actually collaborating with sharon and polk county and Palm Beach and Osceola, and we are putting out a ginormous uh, FASFA event on February 11th. And I'll let Sharon kind of talk a little bit about how that all came together. Okay, I guess I'll, I guess I'll take it from there. So thank you, Carol. Yes, I, I think we uh, started to talk a little bit about the fact that this virtual walls has allowed us to connect with other districts much more easily um, than we had in the past. So we had tried to get together and share and collaborate, but it's just difficult when you have to drive uh, so far. So we um, have formed a collaboration in uh, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach, where we had been meeting regularly. Um, Osceola also joined us, and now Polk County is also joining us. Um, and so we together worked on the four districts, um, worked on a um, HBCU virtual event. I don't want to say a virtual fair because it lasted for two weeks. Um, really amazing. Uh, Palm Beach really led the work in terms of reaching out to over 30, close to 35 HBCUs that every evening for two weeks, um, there were four uh, presentations by HBCUs um, where, with links where they directly sent the links out and, and hosted it, but we were um, able to connect thousands of, of families to this work. Um, also, we, um, as a follow-up, which is what Carol was talking about with the ginormous um, FAFSA event, we did some call to action um, as kind of a growth out of that HBCU event um, so that we're continuing the collaboration. So it's been really exciting that we can extend our reach. Um, obviously, when you have 
a virtual platform, you can reach as many families as possible. And we want every seat, we want to maximize that. So having more districts involved has been great. As part of that HBCU event, we also had a kickoff on the day after Martin Luther King's birthday, after that holiday, um, there was a kickoff event that started the whole thing, which was really awesome. The folks in, in Osceola put together a wonderful video compilation of former students from all of our districts who spoke about their experiences in an HBCU. I thought it was super one powerful on um, the students and, and adults even, um, some people who were very uh, well known in the community shared as well. So it was really a powerful kickoff. There were prizes, really wonderful event that um, the four districts worked together to put together relatively quickly. So, um, so, so that was that was wonderful. Um, and for in terms of Miami Dade County, I think I spoke in December that Carol had in, inspired me um, to do some FAFSA virtual events because that was something that I had wanted to do. Um, and so I have since partnered with uh, Miami Dade College here in our district because I really didn't want to impact my school sites too much. Um, so I've asked for their expertise because normally we will have in person FAFSA completion events in our district where Miami Dade College and the other local schools would support. Um, so the financial aid office at Miami Dade was wonderful. They wanted to participate. Um, and so we are doing now these large FAFSA completion events in our district. Um, the first one, kind of a test one was in January, but really with little advertisement, we had 40, um, 40 participants. And our first big one is actually the day before the um, collaborative one that we're doing. So we're doing our first one on February 10th. We have seven of them uh, scheduled with Miami Dade. Miami Dade uses Blackboard. Um, so today we actually had a practice and, and Carol was right in the advice she gave that you need lots of folks to make all the, the pieces work, but we are doing that in our district. Um, and we are hoping to plan for some events around financial aid, award letters and, and stuff, um, things like that. Now that students are getting their acceptance letters and their financial aid, how to interpret that, how to pay for college. Uh, I know Carol um, includes that in her, her college corner. We're actually, at this point, sharing resources as we have some people who are, are gonna be uh, presenting for both districts for that. So that's that's my next uh, thing we'll be doing in our district and also doing some outreach to um, juniors who will be seniors, uh, so like a college month type activities, um, planning for college, making your college list, how to get on score and things like that we'll be doing as well as the year goes on. And because we had so much success with the HBCU, we're actually planning to do an HSI fair um, uh, next month, uh, yeah, in March sometime. So we're hoping that that goes over really well. And just like uh, Sharon said, um, with the call to action, we have also uh, next week with our FAFSA drive, we also have admissions 101 for all the students. So like, okay, now what? Now what do we do after we heard from all these HBCUs? And then we also have um, in March, part of our CCLR corner was kind of like defining your brand. And one of the things that we're gonna be uh, highlighting for everybody, not just for Broward, is soft skills. You know, we talk, that's number one when we talk to our partners in the community and people who are already going into careers is, you know, the kids know what they're talking about, but the soft skills is really something that, you know, we got to emphasize more. So we're also kind of putting that together as well. This is wonderful. I'm so glad I, at the last minute, decided to do a temperature check um, to see what all has stemmed from trying to make sure that given COVID-19 and we're having to pivot everything virtually, no resources and supports and programs and initiatives are being lost. If they're not just, you know, continuing to thrive in a different atmosphere, more are growing from them, which is, is so great to hear about. So kudos to both of you for your district's programs and, and everything that you're doing. Um, I did want to ask a quick question before the others. Um, the FAFSA event that's happening on February 11th, you did mention that it is in partnership with uh, Miami-Dade. I believe you said it's in partnership with the other counties that uh, you hosted. Five the county event. Yeah. Five county event. And it's open to everyone in, in any county. 
correct? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is virtual. So that's the beauty of it being virtual is that if you're in Hawaii somewhere, you can come join our event. You know, we're gonna go step by step fastball with you. We answer any questions. We got many experts and still need more because we will we'll take any more experts that wanna join in. And if you kind of wanna see what it really looks like, we'd be more than happy to kind of um, get your feet wet a little bit when it comes to uh, doing a virtual fast for night. That's great. That's wonderful. And I'll gather that information and share it for those on the call and those not on the call listening to the recording as well. Um, so diving into questions, Sharon, you mentioned that you guys, just, uh, Miami Day just partnered with Miami Day College and you had your first uh, FAFSA completion event in January and with little to no advertisement, you had 40 uh, participants join. So I'll start with Sharon first and I'll, I'll uh, ask the same question to Carol. How are you advertising your events virtually? Um, what methods are you using to, to get, find parents and students to join your events to know even that these are happening? So I'll first answer how we got the 40 because I was shocked as well, um, is that Miami-Dade actually has a listing of students who applied to Miami-Dade but did not yet fill out the FAFSA. They, they have that information through their financial aid office. So they reached in a direct uh, email uh, blast to those folks. So I am assuming that most of the students on that first one were students who applied to Miami-Dade and who were had the outreach directly from the school. Um, and just on a side note, I, I recently spoke to FIU to talk to them about is there something similar we could do with them because many, many of our students go to FIU. So we're trying to, to look into that as well because I think that's very powerful when they get the message directly from the college as opposed to uh, the co college advisors keep hounding them about filling out the FAFSA. Um, but we, we use, we are a big social media district, especially Twitter, we use that quite a bit. Uh, we created a really um, pretty engaging uh, flyer, which we've put out to all the schools. We've asked them to share it through their social media, um, to use their email, because I think there's a lot more direct communication to schools through email. We have we have accurate emails now because school uh, parents had to supply it in order to communicate. So that's one of the other benefits that has happened is that we really do have a way to communicate more directly with students and parents. Um, also through our college planning to school score, there is direct messaging to students. So we've asked all the advisors to do that. In our district, we have a system called the briefing, a weekly briefing system where offices put out information about important events. So I published a briefing about the importance of FAFSA completion. Um, and we published it to all the schools. So that way all the stakeholders know about it, the teachers. We've also asked the um, the college advisors to work with senior teachers to make it a priority in those classrooms um, and to try to do some targeted outreach to the students who may not have completed. Um, so it's just getting the word out and, and keep um, putting it in front of them and, and also having multiple opportunities to do it. So if they can't make it one night, they can make another and have it on their calendar. So Carol, I don't know if you have anything to add. <laughs> I just wanted to really say ditto to everything you're doing, yeah. right? Uh, kind of the same thing. Um, because we had multiple fast fun nights, we really try to target specific schools at first. So kind of just uh, like for the schools to own it, right? Like if I'm at Fort Lauderdale, if I'm at Dillard, if I'm at you know Boyd Anderson, this is the dates that I'm going to be there. But we also said if you can't go that day, um, you know you can go to another event. But when we when we do the fast fun nights, is you know calling them out, like who's here from Fort Lauderdale, who's here, and just you know giving them a little praise around their school cool I think it also like authenticates you know that this is for you like we're doing this for you um the fact that all of this is recorded um so kids can go back on demand parents can go back on demand and watch it every single night of the you know that we've done has been recorded um we also have something called parent link that we use so we send like a text message email um to parents and students um we also you know we we also have something here called canvas which is where kids are kind of getting their courses and so we have a blast one for uh for the district here as well so we put it out through there we work with our our partner institutions Everybody came on board, Broward College, FIU, FAU, Kaiser. I mean, I could continuously name all the higher ed institutions that said, hey, I'm in um, from TRIO. I mean, everybody was so good because you do need those experts when you know, you're getting all those questions in the Q&A that really are sensitive and you need people to know what they're talking about and to have that customer service with the kids 
so that you're they're able to you know be comfortable um so we yeah we had flyers we posted it everywhere in our district website um so again getting the communication out also sharing it with our schools right letting them know because a lot of our brace advisors um helped you know were the volunteers that helped in specific classrooms you know virtual back classrooms um so that was really helpful and and, and again, they're also promoting it um, and seeing how they can help. And then we also did a survey at the end, basically like if you're not done, fill this out and we're gonna get you one-on-one -on -one help to make sure that you, this is completed. So nobody gets left behind. That is, that is great. And I actually want to sort of a part two um, to that question. We know that these events specifically are um, virtual events that you all are conducting. Um, for your district, and there may be some listeners who are going, who ha are at schools that are still in person with limited students um, allowed. So how have you, if you have, um, overcome any barriers for students with lack of internet or computer access to engage with these events? And also language barriers as well. I know, Carol, you spoke about um, conducting your FAFSA trainings in Spanish and later on in Haitian Creole. So um, how did you find those people to conduct those sessions as well? So how do you overcome the barriers of internet and the language barriers as well? Yeah, so definitely you need you know, experts in, in all the different languages. What's really cool, we use Teams, Microsoft Teams, and we're able to close caption everything that we're saying in up to six different languages. So we definitely took advantage of that. And from our ESOL department, what was the top six you know, languages? And we made sure that we added that. So if you're Spanish speaking, you can have a closed caption in Spanish, um, you know, Portuguese. So we have that information there for our students, which was really nice. Um, you know, there are, you know, now that we're back, basically, uh, brick and mortar, all of our BRACE advisors and counselors are working towards FAFSA completions. It's going to look a little bit different. Um, one of the things that actually uh, spiraled out of, you know, our FAFSA events is my team, which is it's a little, it's small. It's only about six, six to seven um, people. We're actually going in in some targeted schools and doing what we call snowball uh, FAFSA. Uh, if you guys know Dave Ramsey's uh, financial uh, book, it's basically swarming into the schools with, you know, a group of six people and going in with the brace advisors in different virtual classrooms and going in and then we you know and trying to get as many as possible and then we go to another school and another school and another school and we're really hoping that you know this we're piloting it this year really hoping it works out um and then you know working with the teachers that we're going into the classrooms and saying hey who does who needs extra help right because uh a, a lot of I, a lot of our high school students are virtual. They're not going into schools right now. Um, I talked to our biggest high school that usually has over 5,000 students and they're like, if we see a hundred people, that's a, you know, that's a good day. So we have to kind of meet kids where they're at. And the fact that, you know, we can record everything just makes this on demand, like press and play um, great because let's say you're having bad internet access right now you can go back and just press and play uh, at your convenience you know and you could watch it through your phone um and you can ask us questions later because in our FAFSA website there is that survey like i still need help what can i do so there's always direct access to you know the schools and us okay so yeah in our district we are doing all of our larger any event is going to be virtual although there are students in our schools um but we had we had made a very huge effort in our district to make sure all of our families had um, good internet and computers. And so we're constantly reaching out to students who are disengaged to make sure it's not the internet, it's not the computer. Um, and so we're, we're really mindful in our schools of that. And we know that with our seniors, and clearly if there was a family that had difficulty, we would try to find them a space in the school um, for, that, for that help. So I, I don't think that's been so much a barrier because I think like similar to Carol in our district, most of our seniors are the ones who are still home. I think seniors are feeling a little disengaged from going to the building because there are no senior activities and such. So most of them are doing their coursework online. So they do access doing it virtually with families is actually much more helpful because the parent doesn't have to have childcare and doesn't have to worry about getting to the school. Um, they can kind of sit in the computer. They can, you know, continue doing what they're doing and help answer those questions that you need the parent for. 
Um, I absolutely um, feel very strongly about doing a Spanish and a Creole event that had been one of the things that I wanted to do. Right now we're just uh, trans having translators, but we are working on doing a full event um, in Spanish and in Creole. But as you know, you have to have the experts who speak the language, not just folks who speak the language, but you have to have an expert who speaks the language. Um, so we're working with Miami Dade to do that um, currently. But that was a must for us because we do have a lot of um, communities where language is a barrier and there's a lot of um, distrust of the whole process. And we want to like break down all those FAFSA myths and understand that um, it's really important and okay to fill out the FAFSA. It's the best way to help your child go to college. So a lot of times it's it needs to be folks within their community. So we are looking at maybe doing some FAFSA events in within local communities um, so that it's it's kind of not just coming from the school district, but coming from that local community agency. Um, again, virtual, but having them put it out through their churches or through their community um, partners. That is wonderful. And Carol, we actually have a follow-up question, follow question for you from Catherine. Um, she wants to know, in Microsoft Teams with the closed captioning, is that a standard option? Um, and also, when it is recorded, how is the closed caption asked? So I'm not 100% sure if it's a standard option or if it's something that our district purchased additionally. Um, so when it is uh, recorded, you can actually choose which closed caption out of the six. We're only allowed to have six. You want to have it closed caption. You want to be able to hear it. And so it's everything is pretty much transcribed. Thank you so much. Um, and Sharon, you mentioned about uh, making sure, well, Carol and Sharon mentioned about making sure that um, you have these events and the resources in different languages to make sure that um there are no barriers and sharon just mentioned that you sometimes have to go they're thinking now about going into the local communities and making sure that you know different organizations are promoting the events sharing the resources how are you and also she mentioned um seniors who are feeling a little detached as well since they're home and they're not having any senior events so how are you engaging any of those populations who have little desire to engage or lack of motivation or even a uh, digital fatigue. Carol, you can go first if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Something was wrong right there. Um, so I think that the first thing that we did was really try to, like I said before, when we first started it, really say, these are the schools, you know, this is for you, this is for your schools. So, and we started off small. So the first thing we tested this with two schools to make sure that it was gonna work full scale. So I think number one is it's okay to start off small, anything can be done. So it doesn't have to be these big, large events. So even if you wanted to do it with one school, I think it would be just great for you to just, you know, make sure that you get the flyer out with the school name, with their brace advice, you know, with their school counselor or you know we have brace advisors names i think to target it as much as you possibly can to the population you know or the school that you're trying to kind of serve um so the fact that we had four different events well after that that we had the the two um you know uh with other languages but really just say these are the schools that we're doing these is the other schools that we're doing i think that was helpful because it really did kind of say oh man this is for me like it's not just like broward you know broward county public schools is doing this for everybody i don't know if i'm going to participate like we really try to make an efforted um approach to target the schools uh for each event and make sure that we shout them out at you know like so they can represent and kind of feel um that this is for them so that's probably number one is making sure that the communication is is specific and targeted when you do something like this and using that verbiage when you do send out these parent links and text message of the importance of why of like the why you know everybody wants to hear that why before i think they jump into something and like sharon said really taking the myths away so we have like a fastball web page that we take them to like here you know the myths um you 
you know, this is why you should be doing this. And we use a lot of our, our brace cadets, which are our peer influencers at the school to help mitigate that and to help get, you know, the word out because we know that kids listen to kids the most. So if, you know, if our peer, if our peer influencers, our brace cadets are saying like, yes, go to this event, like this is where it's at, then I think we're getting a, 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 a nice uh, turn or, you know, turnout for them too. So I, Laverne, I think in my district, and one of the things that I want to say is that for me, this district-wide FAFSA event um, is really meant to take the burden off the school site personnel like the CAP advisor. So my thought is if I can do something district-wide, they don't have to organize it. They don't have to worry about translators and all of that. They can focus on the outreach to their students. And I truly believe the relationship between an advisor and a student is the most engaging and most important thing. So for those students who are disengaged or for those students who are kind of lost, I'm trying to free up the time of the advisors to be able to make that direct outreach and those connections for those students. And that's where you start to learn things. Like that's where you learn a student is undocumented because they're not filling out the FAFSA and they won't tell anyone why. It's that relationship that's super key. So I was, I'm really trying to free up the time of my advisors um, in a district this large. It's not easy to do a district-wide thing and, and Broward feels the same way, but um, we're trying to take that off of them so they can spend their time. Um, and, and the school sites are impacted so much. Um, the advisors are often used for coverage and all sorts of things that are happening in the school because people are in quarantine and things like that. So really trying to absorb some of that in the district um, so that the advisors can have the, the school site folks can have the time to make those connections, which will ultimately translate to increased rates and in, in, in better outcomes for kids. That is wonderful strategies. Um, and also for the attendees, Carol has mentioned uh, a few times about the Brace Cadets, and I just wanted everyone to know that um, if you were curious about the Brace Cadets, they are the near peer influencers um, throughout Broward County, really. And uh, AFCAN After did a webinar uh, featuring Broward County to learn more about the Brace Cadets. So you can visit FCAN's events page at floridacollegeaccess.org slash events, and you can view the past webinars and you can find the uh, past webinar there about the Brace Cadets. Um, so we have about eight more minutes, um, but I really, really, really want to ask you all uh, two questions, two main questions. One is sort of quick, the other one is really meaty. Um, so the first, um, Carol, you mentioned your county um, partnering with Broward College, Kaiser University, Sharon, you mentioned uh, Miami Dade College and soon to be FIU. How did you engage with those college admissions representatives to partner with you for your program? So, so we have contact. I'll, I'll, I'll go first. We had so many. So it was more than just two. Um, you know, we have all their contacts and they're constantly sending us information, right, to share with our Brace Advisors counselors. So I felt like this was our opportunity to really tap back into them. And everybody sees, you know, the the drop in FAFSA, the drop in college applications. So I think this was their time to be like, yes, oh my God, yes, we want to be included in this. And, uh, and, and they've been just instrumental when it comes to, you know, having their admissions teams there answering those hard questions. Um, so, so we're happy, you know, we're happy. Like, I think it's a, it's, it's, you know, with our higher ed institutions, it is a, a true partnership. Um, we call on them, they call on us and, um, and being able, right at this point in the game, you have to be able to ask for help. And we always tell the kids that way. Right? And sometimes we don't take that at our own advice, but this is the time that we have to ask for help and really come together um, to make sure that we're servicing all of our students and they all have a, you know, a, a call to action and, you know, a post-secondary plan. And so we know that, you know, FAFSA is kind of like the number one step uh, to further your education. So we want to make that happen. Yeah, I, I, I um, feel the same way. Our colleges are constantly in contact with us. We have very good partner, partnerships with them. And when I, when I called Miami Dade um, and I said, I, I really want to do this, they immediately got me the head of their financial aid. They went to the top and we talked about it and they were like, anything we can do to support our community um, because they're, they were always supporting at all the individual school sites anyway. Um, so they're, we're really just making it more of a district effort. Um, and when we did the practice session, they had on like 
probably 25 of their folks on there. So, um, and, and FIU as well, we have a wonderful relationship with their admissions office and they've kind of brought in their financial aid office and, and all of the local colleges, Barry, St. Tom, all of them are always supporting us. We're just asking them to do it in a different way. And I think everyone's a little scared to do financial aid nights um, virtually. Um, so we're kind of all just working together to figure out the best way to do that. Um, and, and again, kudos to Carol and Broward for kind of starting that and, and, and helping us all figure out um, that it can be done. And that's kind of what I did. Once I heard they did it in a large scale, I'm like, okay, we can do that. And I, and I feel like across our state, there might be some smaller districts that, you know, maybe they want to partner together um, to do it. Because I think that when you have virtual events that are open to more folks than just your local community, then you have a, a wide variety of dates and available. And, and it just, you know, you can, you don't have to go to the one that's in your neighborhood. You can go to the one in, in another district if, if that's better, if there's experts. So, so yeah, I, I think the, the college piece is easy. It's just a matter of finding the time to connect with them yourself in your schedule, but yeah. And that's great. Thank you so much, Sharon, that you mentioned um, that schools don't have to just have these events in their isolated schools. They can partner with other districts. And partnership has been such a key in your events as well with the different aspects of your community. Um, and I wanted to know for the final question, um, what tips do you, do you think you can give or what have you seen as best practices for your events and the, the platforms that you've used. So setting them up, facilitating them and maintaining them. I believe Carol Broward is a Microsoft Teams district and Sharon uh, Miami-Dade is a Zoom district, I believe. And sometimes, you know, you might interchange on some platform, but what can you give us those tips and those best practices? Anyone can um, go? Yeah, I'll start. Um, Tips is definitely have everybody know their role ahead of time, right? So we send out a survey beforehand, like who wants to volunteer? And there's, you know, and then we send out like, how comfortable are you in the FAFSA process, right? And we have like from, from a scale to one to five. So you have to know kind of where to place everybody on their comfort, right? So we have a, in, in the back rooms, the virtual back rooms, we have FASFA ID, FSA ID labs. We have, you know, you got lost in the presentation, come over here and we'll get you back in. Um, we have a um, Spanish room. We have a Haitian Creole room. We usually have also a Portuguese room if, you know, we have enough people. So everybody has to know their responsibilities ahead of time, right? Can't just be like a free for all, like we don't know where we're going to be at. We also have a meeting the day before the event just to make sure that everybody's fr is fresh on their head. Um, everybody knows is on the same page and we have a sheet cheat sheet that we like to call it with different links and a q and a of like you know questions that you know that are going to be asked that way if you don't know you could just cut and paste and then all of our little live link rooms are in this sheet sheet too that you can just cut and paste so if somebody says in the q and a like i'm lost or i didn't do my fsa id link here you go, go to this room, go to this room. And we also have what we call floaters that go to each room to make sure that everything is moving along smoothly. And then we have what we like to call our, our, um, our motherboard, who then is in charge. If something is not moving right along, then how, what can we do to help, to help mitigate? Um, one of the uh, great partners that we did have, because we, have, we are a Microsoft um, Teams um, organization, we actually reached out to Microsoft and had them, two of their people come in and do any type of tech uh, you know, problems with us. Luckily, we didn't have any, but that was also another thing to have. Um, and again, because it was just such a big thing, we're like, oh my God, we don't want to break teams. Um, so they were gracious enough to come in and help us with tech support. Also have a backup PowerPoint, right? Because we know that the FSA, um, uh, um, the FAFSA um, um, website tends to kind of have be glitchy if there's a lot of people on there. So we're doing, um, you know, with a fake student, uh, all step by step, but we've noticed, and this has happened to us, that it has broken down several times. So we have to go back and have everything already on the PowerPoint. So we're just kind of like, okay, if this breaks down, then we know where to go uh, and have it ready to go. So just getting everybody on the same page um, is important. And then one of the big things that we, you know, pride ourselves in is customer service. Like there's no 
bad question. There's nothing we can't answer. We're welcoming. We're, we're celebrating you throughout the process. Um, you know, if, if you if you linked at one point, we're like, oh my God, yeah. So it's just a lot of celebration and making sure that people are feeling comfortable um, and that the questions are answered timely. And oh, no, yes, we're here to help you. And that's something that we give out, um, you know, in, in that initial um, uh, volunteer meeting is, this is this is we want people to come back. We want them to to know that we're here for them. So we want everybody to have these these uh, the correct answer. And, and and if you don't have the correct answer, it's OK. Let's get back to you. This is the information. So uh, customer service, friendliness and, and, and those experts are definitely uh, on the top. The only I, I would agree with everything Carol said, but mostly practice. You have to set up a practice session, even if it's not a FAFSA event, any kind of virtual presentation. We did that when we did our HB kickoff. We did a practice just to make sure everyone knows their role and uh, everyone has the proper links and that there's always a backup in case somebody has technical difficulties because um, it's the worst when your host is gone and, and we don't want the, the it to end because somebody had technical difficulties. So, um, but, but practice. Thank you both as always for joining us. Um, and very, very quickly, I just want to close out today. We did have a question about um, how, sorry, two seconds. how to track students virtually, um, student level data, sorry. Um, and I wanted to encourage you all to reach out to your school district to complete the data sharing agreement with the Florida Department of Education so that you can access the student level data, FAFSA completion data. Um, the contact at the Florida Department of Ed for this process is Pedro Hernandez and his contact information can be found on this slide. Again, it will be, uh, the handouts will be shared in uh, about a week or so. But um, this is a great tool for counselors to have the ability to provide one-on-one -on -one support for students in completing their FAFSA, um, especially in those schools where there are high portions of students who start a FAFSA but don't complete one. Um, and then you can identify using this data who needs extra support. Um, I also want to quickly plug the Ping for College webinar series that we have going on. Um, right now, you can, during parts three and four, we will be joined again by our friends from NCAN on Wednesday, February 24th, discussing the latest financial aid updates and special circumstances. And Daniel Barkowitz, who was the speaker for part two, will be back for part four on Thursday, March 11th, discussing how to help students who have been flagged for verification. And FCAN welcomes you to register for these upcoming webinars. Again, FCAN would like to thank Cornerstone funder Helios Education Foundation and supporters Wells Fargo and the National College Attainment Network for their generous support of the College Radio Florida initiatives and today's affinity call. Many, many, many thanks to Carol, Sharon, and Jamise for presenting and discussing with us today. And thank you to everyone for joining and participating. Please enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your week. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Laverne. Bye. Thank you.